Greetings guys, gals and all binary pals and welcome back to another video. Beauty standards are something that have been around for forever. They are something that we all know very well because they make a very big impact on our lives. They impact a lot of the ways we interact, the way we feel about ourselves and other people, um, they impact the way that we are treated, they impact what we see online and everywhere we go. Beauty standards are something that impact all of us in some way or another. We are so largely judged off of the way that we look and as women especially, we are told that our value pretty much lies on the way we look. Like our desirability and our attractiveness and our beauty uh, very much determine the way that we are treated in society. And that is, of course, a very massive problem. And the way that beauty standards change is so incredible. The fact that our body types are seen as a trend is the most abhorrent thing in the world. In the 90s, it was like heroin chic where everyone had to be twig, Thin. And then there was, you know, in the 2010s with the more hourglass figure with like flat stomach, but wide hips, big butt, big boobs. And we're now like moving back towards heroin chic again because you have to look a specific way and you are expected to change that as the times change. And this very largely falls on the hands of capitalism and elitism and classism because, you know, what better way to sell your product than to make you feel terrible about yourself until you spend money? And something that is really aided in this whole thing is social media and the internet. And this has worked in both ways. Social media has really helped uh, progress in the body positivity movement. Social media has very much helped in getting more representation. And I think that there are so many positives about what social media has done for um, body representation and body positivity. Like the way we view bodies now versus like in the early 2000s sort of era. And I see people talk about this on Twitter all the time of like bringing up um, old images and things from the early 2000s where women who are like a size six would be on stage and their midriff would be showing and the media would be ripping into them and like calling them fat and disgusting and whales and etc. Where now no one really looks at that body type and would say that. Well, people would, but we don't really as a general society do that and say that. Like you see Megan Trainer in 2013 was like the voice of body positivity with all about that base. And everyone was like, oh my God, this like really fat woman is making this music about body positivity. And now we look at that and we're like, I can't believe that this <laughs> really average sized woman was what we were all looking at being like, wow, fat power, you know? It's changed a lot in that sense. There is a lot more inclusion, there's a lot more diversity and that's fantastic. And I'm glad that we have seen that. Social media has also though worked completely the opposite as well. It has gone in both directions simultaneously because most of what you post online isn't real obviously, and beauty standards are still a massive thing and people do still try to live by them. And so, you know, you're only posting well-posed photos, you're only posting photos at your best angle, people are editing their photos, etc. And your feed gets full of these like, you know, picture perfect bodies that are being promoted to you, being like, this is what you should look like to be happy. And that's still most of what we see. And it's still most of what we see on television and in the movies and everywhere. Most of what we see is still very particular to what is currently considered ideal and attractive, which again, changes like the wind. But despite all the body positivity movement that exists and that is positive, it hasn't taken away from the problems that are still there. And now with social media as well, it makes marketing products to fix these problems so much easier. And it also allows these things to be targeted towards children 
incredibly easily as well. For a while, I don't know if this is still a thing, but I remember like tummy tea was something that everyone was selling, which was effectively just laxatives to help you lose weight. And a lot of celebrities were advertising that, uh, which is a massive issue. And a lot of the people who were buying it were teenagers. And that's something that, I mean, I never personally bought, but it's something that I looked into when I was a teenager. It's something, you know, when people were advertising these diet things and the part of the internet that I was on, that's, that was so validating. And it was something that really impacted me and the way that I lived my life. And I know that that's the same for a great many people. You know, the internet is a massive, massive place where everything exists and it is now so, so heavily monetized. Everyone is always selling something. Because social media is so monetized and because social media is full of people who are seeking money, clout, and validation, this leads to a massive amount of just body shaming in order to receive those things in return. So you have obviously the celebrities who are advertising tummy tea and things to be like, you wanna look like me, this is what I did, you should do this so then you can look like me so that they can earn money. And then you have this wild thing that's been happening for forever, but has gotten so bad recently of just creating problems and telling women they need to fix it. Just making things up. When I was a teenager, it was thigh gaps. You needed a thigh gap. Like you had to have one. That was what was desirable and something you had to do. And there was, you had to have your belly button in line with your waistline, which meant people were like photoshopping their belly buttons higher, which what a time that was. Also at the same time as the tummy tea stuff was happening. So obviously, you know, those are correlated. And then now, you have just the most absurd things that are being created and people are being told are wrong and you need to fix. It's like the shape and the size of your nose. It's thigh brows and hip dips. It's do you have hair on your knuckles? It's the shape of your jawline. It's all these things that you cannot change and are just things that, you know, people have. They can be the most outlandish, ridiculous things that are just a human trait. <laughs> and suddenly someone on TikTok is like, yeah, but like, if you have that, it's ugly and you need to fix that. You need to change that. And then suddenly millions of girls are insecure because someone just came on TikTok one day and said something ridiculous and people commented, oh my God, I have that. Or, oh my God, I don't have that. Just creating insecurities. And then of course, when insecurities are created, products are created to solve them. You have it with like cellulite <laughs> treatments, even though cellulite is just a natural thing that happens with how your fat cells sit. You have like all these exercise regimes to get thigh gaps, even though that's just the shape of your bones and your pelvis. Every time problems are created, uh, people are feeling more insecure, products are created, and then we are then lining the pockets of people who benefit off of us being insecure and hating ourselves. And these things being said on TikTok and these insecurities being spread through TikTok is especially problematic in the sense that like the kids on here are getting younger and younger and they're getting very impacted and influenced incredibly quickly to the point where I've seen like, you know, gen alpha slang. And one of the slang words and things they say and do is mewing, which is like ch sharpening your jawline or whatever. I saw a TikTok about it ages ago. But the fact that this like group of children are all like mewing and using that as a slang term and something that they just use in their everyday conversation is kind of terrifying to me, honestly. Like that's so baffling and so odd and quite upsetting that something that is like so central to the younger generation is like sharpening your jawline, you know? And it just keeps spiraling. And as much as the body positivity movement is thriving and moving, this is still so alive and well, and I am no longer in the thick of it. 
I am not in the thick of it anymore as an adult, but I know that I was drowning in it as a teenager. And I am sure that there are still so many who are also drowning in it. And one thing that has never changed, it's not gone away. It is not a new insecurity, uh, but it is one that is being obsessed over by people getting younger and younger and younger. And that is aging. Aging and wrinkles is something that we have been told we need to be insecure about and scared of for, I don't know how long, but at least my whole life, we've been told that that's something that you don't want and that's something that you have to prevent at all costs. And this is obviously still something that is said a lot and is talked about a lot on TikTok. Um, and everywhere, and everyone sells products for this. It's literally all around us constantly. And this has reached children. And you now see literal children who are starting to do anti-aging skincare. You see like 11 year olds using retinol and anti-wrinkle serums. And it's quite horrifying and upsetting because people are like, you're never too young to start caring about your skin and the aging process. It's like, yes, <laughs> yes you are. You absolutely can be too young for that. In fact, I don't think it's something we should ever really care about. It is just a natural part of life and of living. The way that we shame women and make women afraid of aging is so, so upsetting. And the fact that it has gotten into our children is even more upsetting. And this is something that I empathize with a lot. This is something that I struggle with a lot myself, as frustrating as it is and as much as I wish that I didn't suffer from this, I, grew up in a household where this was so incredibly important. I have been told my entire life that women do not age well. I have been told my whole life that wrinkles are bad and the worst thing that could happen. I was told that I should start getting Botox when I was 20. I got microneedling done when I was a teenager. Um, I was given a bunch of serums and skincare and stuff. When I was a teenager, I watched my mom go, she's been getting Botox and fillers my whole life. She's had facial peels, facelifts, etc. Like I have watched this happen my entire life. I have been around this conversation my entire life and it's impacted me so badly. And it's so, so frustrating because I am 24 and I've spent the past few years, like when I'm doing my skincare and whatever, I look in the mirror and I like notice that I'm looking for wrinkles or I see like small lines starting to form and getting really upset and I'll be looking at anti-aging stuff. And I have to take a moment and I have to think and I have to be like, why does this matter? Why do I care about this? I shouldn't care. This is so stupid because if I start buying anti-wrinkle cream and I start paying for anti-aging stuff, all I'm doing is lining the pockets of the men who have told me that I need to be afraid of that. All I'm doing is giving money to the industry that is telling me that I am not allowed to get old. You know, why do we view wrinkles as such a bad thing? Why is getting older viewed as something so negative? I think there's something so cool about the fact that, you know, we age, <laughs> we grow, we show our lives in our bodies. And there's something really creepy and weird about the fact that these beauty standards are always set by men, right? They're carried on through women, but they are set by men. And we're not allowed to look over 30. 
We have to look like we're like in our 20s for as long as we possibly can. But they don't have to. They're not doing anti-aging shit. They don't give a fuck. They don't have that same beauty standard. You see like middle-aged men in movies. You see, they exist and no one is calling them unattractive for being old or far less people are calling them unattractive for being old and far less of them are being scrutinized for being old. Whereas women constantly are. Women come out of these spaces when they're like in their thirties because they're thrown away as being too old and they can't come back into it until they can play like old women. And it's something that we've watched our whole lives. It's something that I've heard my whole life. I had this conversation once with my mom where she told me that I needed to start getting Botox in my early twenties. And I was like, why? <laughs> and she just told me, you know, like you don't want to get wrinkles. You don't want to age because women don't age well. And I was just like, what about men? Why don't men have to do this? And she was telling me, well, men age fine. They age well. Women though, women don't age well. Or if they do, it is very, very rare for women to age well. And I had to try to have this conversation being like, it's not that women don't age well, it's that we are told that women don't age well. We are told that aged women are unattractive. We are told that that makes them less valuable. We are told and constantly shown over and over and over again that the only way to be beautiful as a woman is to be young. We don't have that same standard for men. So this is just the way we've trained our brains to view it. We've trained our brains to think, old man, fine. Old woman, bad. That's not an inherent thing. That is a learnt thing. We don't, we aren't born <laughs> thinking that. That is something we are told. And I have been told that my whole life and trying to shake that is so difficult. So I am not trying to say to people to immediately just like stop caring because that is an incredibly hard thing to do. You can't just stop caring. You have to try to refocus and rewire your brain and question the decisions that you are making. And it's so important to ask yourself when you are doing things for your appearance, uh, you have to ask yourself like who you are doing it for, why you are doing it, you know? Like I have a pretty strong skincare routine. It has a lot of steps um, and that's because I have acne and it sucks <laughs> and it hurts and it's uncomfortable. And so I have a pretty strong skincare routine. And that is largely because of the discomfort that that causes me. Although there is obviously an aesthetic purpose in that as well, because of what I've been taught my whole life and what we've all been taught our whole lives about skin and what skin should look like as well. And so I have to confront that in myself. When I get frustrated about breakouts, I have to question like, am I upset because this is uncomfortable or am I upset because of how it looks? And question the way that I think and the way that I view things and have that conversation with myself. And that's the same when it comes to things like every procedure, when it comes to like plastic surgery and Botox and everything, you have to ask yourself these questions. And when it comes to anti-aging, especially like wrinkles, it's, it's such a weird, creepy thing that we're told we aren't allowed to age. And I think that that's a really important one to confront and think about why we as women aren't allowed to look older. And once you ask that and you're like, why do men want me to look young and you realize how gross that is, it's much easier to not care. <laughs> it's much easier to not care when you realize that it's just a bunch of weird, creepy men who want you to spend all your time and money trying to look young again to please them. Not for me, not today. There is also, of course, the factor in this whole thing of elitism and wealth because it's expensive to keep this up, you know? Like getting Botox regularly, having intense skincare regimes and a bunch of like products and like red light masks and things like that takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. And you get countless TikToks of these women coming on being like, these are all the things you have to do to look your best. These are things that I wish I started doing younger and they're out here with so many products and spending so much time and money on these things.
And obviously working class people or not even working class people, but just not (laughs) upper class people at this point, are not gonna be able to afford this both in money and in time. And so it does so much have this air around it of like only poor people look old. And a lot of beauty standards come down to this, even when it comes to weight, like being thin versus being fat. That is also comes down a lot to elitism of way back when being fat was the beauty standard because it meant you could afford to eat. It meant you could afford to have a lot of food and like cakes and sugars and delicacy, like you could eat food. So being fat was beautiful because You were the upper class, you had money. Whereas now it is so much harder to have access to like healthier foods, right? Like the food that is the cheapest and the easiest available is like fast food. It's crisps, it's easy to grab things. You don't have time to cook. You don't have the money to buy full meals. You have to do fast things. So lower class people are actually more likely to be overweight. Whereas if you want to buy a lot of salads and superfoods and go to the gym, all of that costs money. You have the time to work out. You have the time to think about what you're eating. You have the time to cook meals. And so that beauty standard, again, has elitism in it. And the same when it comes to like tans. And this is where it's interesting in different parts of the world. Like here, being tanned is a beauty standard because it means you have time to go to the beach, you have time to travel, you have time to spend outside in the sun while everyone else is inside working. So you wanna be tanned because that means you have time to spare, you have money. Whereas in other parts of the world, like in Asia, it's the other way around where being tanned means you've been working outside or that's where the standard comes from. You're tanned because you work in the fields, you work lower level jobs. Whereas if you're pale, it means you have the luxury of spending your time inside. And so their beauty standard is the paler you are, the better, because that means you have more money. And the tan you are, the less money you have. So it's exactly the same beauty standard, but flipped. And so people go to all these drastic lengths to try and prevent aging or reverse aging um, and plaster it all over social media. It is massive on TikTok. Like there are million, like thousands of videos getting millions of likes. And a lot of them are nighttime routines. Like this woman is someone I came across a lot. I go to bed like this so I can wake up like this. Let's run through my routine. First things first, we gotta prep my castor oil pack. It'll soak while we do the rest. Cover with one to two tablespoons of castor oil and rub it in. First cleanse, I go in with this Anua cleansing oil. Cleanse number two, Anua deep pore cleansing foam. I've been loving using a face brush for this. Cleans way better than my hands. These MetaCube zero pore pads and flaxseed gel have been the only things that have helped my large pores. Mixun bean essence, this from a Korean glass skincare routine. Improves skin tone and texture and helps control sebum. Two eye creams, GM Collins. Bota peptide eye cream saved my crow's feet. They are now non existent. Also, going with a cream moisturizer. Stranded on an island and I can only have one skincare product, it would be beef tallow. Another powerhouse grapeseed oil. Super anti inflammatory. Helps with sun damage, elasticity, hyperpigmentation, acne. Starting to get greasy. The top layer is something I don't understand why it doesn't get more hype. Castor oil is so super hydrating, but it won't clog your pores. I'll get a castor oil pack from Amazon for $12. Wear it over my liver to support detox detoxifications, a hair bonnet, protect our hair against breakage while we sleep, an overnight mask, either snail mucin or collagen. Collagen face masks are actual sorcery. My mask is a super easy hack to falling asleep faster and getting way better sleep. And last but not least, the most life-changing part of this entire routine, mouth tape. Try it one single night, you'll get the best sleep of your life. Good night. And like, she's doing all of this for what? (laughs) For what? This is the thing, right? You are going to age no matter what, you cannot stop yourself from aging forever. And even if you could, I don't particularly understand the point, like why you feel the need to dedicate your life to that. Like you are spending so much time and money doing this every single night and it can't be comfortable to sleep like that either. 
And you're doing it just so you don't show how long you've lived on your skin. And this extends into past the products and things, but extends into, you know, people telling you, you have to sleep on your back. So she has a TikTok telling you how to make sure you sleep on your back, even though she's always been an avid side sleeper. This is your fucking reminder that if you're sleeping on your side, you're creating wrinkles on your face every single night while you sleep. And as a 32 year old, I have mastered sleeping on my back, but I know it's not that easy for everyone. All you need are paper towels, a pillow and a pillowcase. You literally shove your paper towel rolls, make sure they're nice and full into a big old pillowcase. I like to use a king case and a standard pillow. That way there's more room in the case. And then you just spread them apart and you sleep with your head in the middle and your head literally can't move. Like you'll be locked into place. You're gonna learn how to sleep on your back. You're welcome in advance. Yeah. I don't know about you, um, but I prefer being comfortable <laughs> while I sleep. And they go into talking about the ways to prevent wrinkles in teenagers to the point where they literally are telling you to stop using your facial muscles. If you are 14 years old and developing this wrinkles here above eyebrow, that means you are doing this uh, uh, movement too much. The more you do, it's gonna have like a mountain here, like a bump, like a speed bump. Uh, and then it's gonna cause a wrinkle. So try not to use this muscle too much. Like, it's absurd. You are telling children <laughs> to stop raising their eyebrows, you are telling children to be cautious of the expressions they make because when they're older, they'll get wrinkles. Are you okay? No, the answer is no. The fact, the fact that we are trying to tell anyone, let alone children, that you have to control expressions and the way you move your face because you're going to get older is actually insane. Like that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. It does not matter. Making people insecure because they have wrinkles on their forehead because they, you know, have eyebrows that lift up because when skin moves, it has to move somewhere. It's like when you sit down, that's when you have like belly rolls because it's stretched out and then it's squished down. It's like how your thighs spread out when you sit down. Because when you're standing up, they have all the space. You sit down, they're squished. That's what happens when you squish things. Like, this is just the way it works. Trying to make people insecure because of the way their face moves is ridiculous. And then you have the anti-wrinkle straws. Because apparently pursing your lips and drinking out of a straw is going to give you more defined lines around your mouth. And obviously we don't want that. So we have to buy very special straws and drink everything out of them so that you are keeping a neutral expression on your face so that you don't get a few lines around your mouth as you get older. Girl, don't do it. It's not I already working. did it. I already did it. Like it's fucking ridiculous. And like the way that your body can be impacted by anything is like, it's not something that you can control. And I guess maybe this is something that because there's so much uncontrollable, maybe it's trying to control something that is uncontrollable in a similar sense to how like eating disorders work. Maybe it's something along those lines, in which case therapy is needed, you know? Like if you're obsessing over this so much to the point where it becomes like compulsive obsessions, like with eating disorders, then this is just something that you need to have therapy for. And you definitely shouldn't be on the internet telling millions of other people to live exactly like you um, and spend a lot of money and time on all of these things for no reason other than to fit some insane beauty standard. I've seen enough TikToks of 20 year olds going and getting Botox because they've been told to train their muscles in their foreheads to not move so they don't get wrinkles. I've seen enough women going and getting fillers and doing all these things to prevent aging because we've been told our whole lives that is the worst thing that we can do. And as I said, there are now children who are using retinol. There are children who are saving their allowances to buy skincare 
to prevent aging in 20 years time. There are some things that I do to slow down the aging process as a 14 year old. I started doing most of these things at 12. Number one, I take two apple cider vinegar pills. I do this twice a day. Number two, I use a retinol twice a day. And one of my favorite tips is I get my body lotion and put a little bit in that and then apply it to my body as usual. It's actually so good for you. Next is I love Korean skincare and I do two face masks a day. I always use the leftover essence all over my body. I leave this face mask on for around 10 minutes. Never forget to do skincare on your neck because that's one of the main things that ages. Again, using the leftovers. Next, I would always recommend a sunscreen with usually an SPF above 50. I use three fingers worth before my makeup. It doesn't matter if I'm just going to school, I always do this. Next, I always have green tea in the morning. Green tea is great for slowing down the anti-aging process and it's super anti-inflammatory and it also tastes super good. I always add a spoonful of raw honey to it because that's also an anti-inflammatory. And the next thing I do, and probably the most crazy, is whenever I'm going on a long road trip, I always tape up a piece of construction paper. This blocks most of the UV rays. And last but not least, I always sleep with a satin pillowcase. Bye, hotties. And I know retinol can have other benefits. It isn't necessarily just for anti-aging. I was prescribed retinol as a child for skin issues that I have, but that is not what I am talking about here. I am talking about children and teenagers who are specifically buying these products to prevent wrinkles. I've seen comments of 14 year olds being like, I have creases around my eyes. What does that mean? What do I do? And people trying to give advice as to how to not move your face to prevent lines from happening. So don't smile, don't frown, don't be too expressive. Like let kids experience emotions. Let kids just live and exist without this constant fear of the way that they look and how they are going to be looked at by others. This is the thing that we don't seem to realize is that like the standard isn't something that we're born with. It's something that we create. It is something that we continue. It is a cycle that we are the ones who need to break. And continuing to buy these products and promote these products and promote this idea, all it is doing is lining the pockets of rich men who want to see us suffer. And it keeps us suffering while they don't really give a single fuck about us at all. They benefit off of our suffering, you know? And that's enough to keep me from making these purchases. And I hope that it's enough to help some of you not make these purchases as well. Like none of it is real. Literally none of it is real. This is all made up. This fear is made up. Why do we feel like we need to look younger than we are? Why is that always viewed as something that we want, something that is a compliment. It's like, oh, you're 30, you look 25. Why is that something that everyone is so excited to hear? We just really need to come in it and look at it and think about it and dissect it and try to break this cycle apart. We have managed to convince generations and generations of women that the way our bodies look define us, the way that we look represents our value in society. And we've made it the most important thing. We have made teenagers think that looking young is the most important thing in the world. This is something that we are responsible for. Sure, like we did not create the standard, but we are upholding it. And I refuse to raise my children if I had children, with those same ideas. I grew up in a house where that was important and I refuse to carry that on. And I hope that other people are making that decision as well. I, as I said, I do not blame the people who are doing these things. I am not upset and angry at 20 year olds who are going out and getting Botox. I am upset and angry at the people who are telling them that they need to do that. I'm upset that that is being promoted and encouraged. I'm upset that we don't have any representation of older people being beautiful. I am upset that when you read books, they say things like, she was beautiful if not for her old age. I'm sick of old age and wrinkles being seen as not beautiful and having that reinforced over and over again. I'm not upset with people for doing these things and for having this fear and for taking these steps. I am upset at people who are promoting it. And I am especially upset at people who are promoting it to 
children. And I am upset with parents who then will go and buy these products for their children instead of having a conversation with them about it. I am upset that there are parents who are constantly saying how horrible aging is, how you have to do all these things to prevent it. I think one thing that parents don't realize is that as children, they are our entire worlds. Like your mother is the most beautiful person in the world to you when you're a child. And then you listen to them talk badly about themselves and their appearances and suddenly that's the norm, you know? That's what you think is expected. That's now how you view what you're meant to view yourself as. You grow up your whole life hearing your mother talk about how wrinkles are bad and how aging is bad and how many procedures she has to get. It's really hard to knock that out of your brain. So I understand that it's hard to break the cycle and I understand where all of this is coming from. We need to change that in ourselves. We need to change the way we talk about things around our children and around and on the internet where children are watching. You know, like if you yourself are insecure about something, then I'm sorry that that is something that you are dealing with. But going and making that insecurity everyone else's problem, that is a problem. Having this insecurity and then sharing it with everyone else and validating that insecurity in everyone else when it shouldn't be validated because it's made up. <laughs> it's a made up insecurity and we're just throwing money at people who shouldn't be taking our money and making people who can't afford that feel worse about themselves, you know? There is a divide and people don't acknowledge it often enough. People don't acknowledge that divide and classism and elitism um, and often like that goes hand in hand with racism as well that happens when it comes to body standards. It's there and it's strong and it's very, very overlooked, but it shouldn't be. So ultimately this isn't what I was planning this video to be. I was gonna sit here and watch a bunch of TikToks, but then I talked for 45 minutes. <laughs> and so I'm gonna have to change this whole video in editing. I guess I just wanted to sit down and have a rant about this because it is a massive issue and it is something that we need to talk about more. I don't wanna be logging on to the internet and seeing kids doing wrinkle prevention routines when they're like 16. I don't wanna be seeing dermatologists telling 14 year olds what they need to do to prevent wrinkles. I don't want to see people posting their absolutely ludicrous nighttime routine with hundreds of thousands of likes because they don't have any wrinkles. I would like to see people just being happy with the way that they look. I would like to see people embracing getting older because it's beautiful. You know, we have never been able to get this old in all of human history. The average lifespan for so long was like 40, you know? Like we live to be old now. And I suppose maybe that's where the fear is. Like we never used to look like this. We never used to get old. But I think it's so beautiful that we do get old. And I don't think that we should be wanting to hide that or be afraid of it. You can be old and you can look old. It is okay. Don't be afraid to use your expressions. Don't be afraid to do things that make you happy. I just want everyone to know that, you know, like I understand that it is incredibly hard to break out of this cycle. It is incredibly hard to not care. I have to actively make the effort every single day to not care. I have fallen into spirals myself. I have added like vegan collagen to my cart. I've looked at the price of microneedling. I have done all of this and I have to pull myself out of it. Like I understand that it is hard and I especially understand when like your moral beliefs and the way you actually feel contradict each other. And it can be a really hard struggle and I'm not trying to invalidate that. We do not have to change our standards have to change. The way we treat each other has to change. Our priorities 
have to change. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you had a good rant with me. I don't really even know if this was cohesive or made any actual proper sense. So I hope that you enjoyed sitting down and just having a bit of a rant because <laughs> that's what this ended up being. <laughs> Please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I upload every few days and I would love to see you again. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Michaela, Natasha, Lady Nutbar, Mr. Noodle, Radsack, Knitting Menace, Samuel, Chris, Elias, Danielle, Eldo, Jessica, Ikazel, Mandy, Josh, and Bobby. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to be on my Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash savvycat. Click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. When you close your eyes.